welcome everybody. It is my pleasure to introduce your um, workshop leader, Kathy Hardy. She's worked in the early childhood field for over 30 years, holding positions as a director, preschool teacher, elementary teacher, college instructor, mentor, trainer, studio teacher, and she specializes in documentation of children's works, documentations of environments, setting up environments for children's families, staff, and creative arts. Kathy is currently working at the Winneka Public School Nursery as a junior kindergarten teacher. Prior to that, she was a studio art teacher, and a lot of what she's sharing is things she did with the children in the school. She's been an active participant in the McCormick Center for Early Childhood Leadership, mentoring directors from all over the United States and serving on the advisory board. She's a frequent, pre frequent presenter at the Leadership Connection Conference, the NACI Annual Conference, and the Early Care and Early Childhood Centers in the Chicago area. <coughs> Kathy acted as an art therapist for Chicago Easter Seals, a program serving low-income and special needs children. She serves on the board of, for the Alliance at the McCormick Center for the Early Childhood Leadership. Kathy holds a master's degree in early childhood administration and curriculum from National Lewis and is an Illinois, has an Illinois director credential. Kathy has, has visited the schools in Reggio Emilia twice in the last five years, once as a part of a five-state administrative tour representing Illinois and the second time in a focus group on the role of art in children's lives in society. She brings her creative outlook into all that she does, I can say that with true authority, and does and inspires us to see the extraordinary in everything that is ordinary and every day. Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you, Gary. Um, On your table are invitations, provocations for you to uh, experiment with, play with, while I'm talking, if you get bored, or otherwise, just if you want to use your hands. Um, when I was asked to do this workshop, they were very keen on how do you set something up in your classroom and walk away. So, just like Gaber said, children have this open-endedness about the provocation. They can do whatever they want. There is no right or wrong way. It's just materials that you might put out that would be of interest to them. And oftentimes, particularly in our JK classroom, we will put out something and the children are far more interested in something else we leave it out and eventually they will come to it. So these are just some ideas of way of presenting interesting materials to children. During lunch, uh, the luncheon tables will be <coughs> set up with more of the same, uh, just so you can take whatever you want back in your head. So the title of my workshop today, you all hear me? Yes. is art as a verb. And it beautifully follows Gaber's uh, workshop because he talked about children having a story, having time, and just having materials to kind of mess around with. To me, um, art, I think it sort of lost its meaning in, for sure, elementary schools and on upward. Um, and I think as an adult, when you say, oh, my child brought home art, art is something that we look at on a wall, it's beautiful, it's interesting. To many of us, art has an emotional attachment. So using art that way is a noun. But to me, art should be a verb. It is in everything, it's across all domains of your classroom. And everything we do every day is art. So uh, we're just going to run through a few, a little itty bitty art lesson, and I don't want to bore everybody, and then we'll get to the other stuff. But uh, like all development, artistic development follows a predictable sequence. You start with scribbling, you end up in more realism uh, phases, and then you go all the way back, like Picasso or Matisse, and you make the simplest form. So it's about construction, constructing, deconstructing, 
reconstructed. Um, I'm reading right now um, Wallace Irving's uh, Mona Lisa, or I'm sorry, Leonardo da Vinci book, and he talks about Leonardo da Vinci. He never, ever, ever finished the Mona Lisa. He died, and the Mona Lisa went unfinished. And it has nothing to do with the background her, or her smile not being finished, but he constantly deconstructed, added, reconstructed on his age. So uh, every single, just like any other development, um, reading, writing, art is the same way. Children also can move back and forth through the stages. And often times we have, get right now, five-year-olds that are still drawing um, figures with their arms sticking out of their ears, their head. And then we have children that are full-on drawings with earrings, moles, eyebrows, ages and stages of different sequences. The first stage is the scribble stage. Um, and scribbles, uh, <coughs> just a result of large movements and really just messing around. This little girl is working with crepons, just on an enormous sheet of paper. Um, and children are, like she's, she, you don't, can't see this, but she's about to start drawing on her hands. Because children at this point are far more interested, not in the marks they leave, but in the way things feel, smell, um, often taste, you'll see that later too. Um, in the pre-schematic ch stage, children have a better control over their scribbles. Um, in part because they are larger and they have more control over their muscles. Uh, you see a lot of things that are curved, uh, lines, um, you know, children might run by and just make a dash. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything yet, it's just something to do. Uh, this is a little vignette with Nicholas. He is intense and very focused on covering um, the marks that he made the day before. Uh, with gray paws, now with watercolor. And in his intense concentration, he does not notice like the paint dripping down his arms and everything. And then his classmate Walter says, he's covering the marks on his hand. And Nicholas looks at his hands for a bit and then continues painting. This is more the pre-schematic. The schematic age is where children actually make marks on paper uh, they understand that symbols convey meaning, an X is a hug, a circle is a kiss, and then that like stuff, yeah. An O is a hug, the X is a kiss. Um, they're really into lines and patterns. Um, and this, of course, is great because when lines carry symbols, it's the first step into reading. And again, this can be two and a half to three and a half, or even five. Um, then we have the transition stage, which many of us are in in, in our preschool programs. Um, they, each shape represents something. Uh, they can name and label their creations. Uh, they, they might have a plan where mommy is here, the dog is here, I am here, and it all fits on paper. And children branch out and use more colors. This is a little vignette of Cinderella. And these children are four and a half. Uh, once upon a time, Cinderella lived in a village with her evil stepsisters and stepmothers she was mean to. Cinderella's real mother was very sweet, but she dies. Cinderella was so sad that eye drops came out of her eyes. <laughs> the prince asked Cinderella to go to the ball with him. He lived in the castle. She goes to the ball in a wagon. No, the fairy godmother came and picked a pumpkin and turned it into a carriage. And then the prince and Cinderella got married and had a baby. Actually, two. A boy and a girl. They are twins. They live happily ever after without the evil sisters and the stepmother. The head. So here we can clearly see Cinderella in her coach. And um, that is the castle with the castle spray. Another little vignette. Uh, these are Vera and Alexandra, and they're looking at their faces together. Um, they, they're doing self-portraits. And this is like just a little vignette of a conversation. We are friends and very silly. We like to laugh and be very silly. We both have green hair decorations. We have, you have more, your hair is longer. Look at my tongue, it's so bumpy. Little bumps are all over it. 
You are a silly. Shut your mouth. <laughs> you have to match your skin with the color, with the right color. It's important. This is serious, but we're silly. We like being silly and laughing. So children, again, at this stage, can do a little more representational art. This is the art we all wish our preschool teachers to, could do, the preschool uh, children could do. This is the realism stage. And this is from eight to 10. Uh, this actually is uh, a painting that my son Cole did when he was eight. And you can see there's perspective, there's line, um, there's definitely size, gray color. Uh, I like to call it the gang stage. Uh, because unfortunately, children are not so concerned with what they can produce now or what they see and can draw. It's more what their friends think. So there's a lot of pressure. The reason why, and this is our last slide in the art lesson, the reason why I brought you up to this point is because oftentimes we want our children, we think art is drawing or making lines because we all know it's free writing. <coughs> Um, most preschool programs want children to write their name before going on to kindergarten. Many kindergarten programs expect children to be able to write their name. So sometimes we look at arts as an excuse for writing or making lines. Children at this age, just like Gaber said, learn from tactile experience experiences, open-ended, and absolute joy. Um, often in our school, uh, you, you walk in in every classroom, we don't have easels, we have giant um, plywood boards. And many magical things happen on these boards, but mostly they're used to make a mess. And like when Gaber was saying that he, he surrounded himself with this big mushy mess. I know Lisa is one of our teachers in, in our classroom. I'm sure she has found herself in many of those instances where it's not a, it was a good idea, but now it's not a good idea. But on our plywood, uh, you will see children eye dropping paint, throwing paint, um, using their feet to walk on paint, and they love it and they want more. So, uh, I think art is serious play. And when you look at work, it means to engage in activities with wholehearted participation. That's only if you love, love, love what you do. Um, art is a diverse range of human activities. So if you combine the two together, you have wholehearted participation in a diverse range of human activities. Art is more than mark making and drawing. It's a necessary action for all of us today. It fosters creativity, confidence, communication, collaboration, um, dedication, accountability, focus, problem solving, and perseverance. Art is, and so what I did is I basically went through some various fun slides and put all the verbs I could think of in an alphabetical way to sort of organize this. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm worse than Gamer and I'm all over the place. But art is to accomplish, affect, apply, arouse, articulate, and awaken. Art is to brush. Art is to captivate, capture, carve, conjure, control, contrast, contour, convey, create, and critique. Art is to characterize, communicate, and conceptualize. One table here works with little children. Uh, this little, this little children. Uh, oftentimes, we don't think of something like putting a child in a little tub with various yarns as arts or giving them just textures to explore, but that is arts. Art is to dance, <coughs> decorate, depict, design, develop, display, 
draw and distort, is to echo, alleviate, emancipate, embellish, embody, merge, emphasize, enchant, envision, and etch. It's to evoke, cite, exhibit, experience, <coughs> explore, and express. It's to fascinate, feel, focus, and fuse. It's to hang for all to see. In the very beginning, I read you that little vignette about um, Vera and Alexandra. There they are looking at their self-portraits. <coughs> Art is to illustrate, immerse, impassion, incorporate, and inspire. It's to interpret, interweave, intrigue, invert, and interlace. Art is to juxta juxtapose and layer. It is to manipulate and outline. Art is to paint, pioneer, play on, and portray. Um, I'm just going to stop with these slides. So this was from our arts camp at our school last summer. And this <coughs> setting up invitations, we would just lay out a butcher block paper <coughs> or large canvas that we bought at the paint store that the painters cover your furniture in. <coughs> and then we would just put big, um, like turkey baster pan, turkey roasting pans of paint and just lay like the toilet plungers. And we would just wait and watch what the children would do. Um, a lot of them are very cautious. Uh, then they realize that the plunger gets stuck to the paper and they're pulling and pulling. Um, I have a great picture of a little girl jumping up in the air and plunging it down. Um, the same with the bicycles actually, we, we, we didn't stop them from riding the bikes. Um, but the big thing was those squeezy bottles. Maybe we had 25 squeezy bottles, and the children would, and the only direction was uh, try to keep the paint on the canvas rather than in the bushes and in the parking lot and in one another's faces. But the bikes were actually their idea, which we were hoping. And we decided if they didn't ride the bikes through, that we would say, hey, what would happen if you rode a bike through? But they did it on their own, and uh, this little person who's got the paint, there's a picture of her where she's double fisting it <laughs> and riding, and she, she looks like a crazy person doing it, but she had so much fun. Art is to research, we act, we find, reflect, reveal, remind, render, represent, and we Art is to saturate, sculpt, shape, shoot, picture, shoot, uh, show, sketch, stir, study, and speak of. Art is to touch and transform. Art is to uplift, view, visualize, and witness. Art is found in science. In math, in literature, here out of the purple crayon, and uh, the mittens are from the mitten movie. <laughs> <laughs> right? That was hard. There's a lot. Right. I was thinking the one where the mitten gets caught in the snowball. Uh, the missing yeah, mitten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Artists found in music and drama. Uh, this is a rendition of Cinderella, where the children made all their own costumes. Um, the middle section is from a music project that the JK did it last year in our school. They did a whole exploration of music and the children, like from Stomp to Vivaldi, and the children uh, made their own musical instruments. And then the last little picture is from um, a group of junior kindergartners um, and they're singing, uh, they have antlers on their heads, and they're singing um, Every Reindeer Can Prance, you know that song? Every reindeer can uh, tango, every reindeer can prance. Uh, 
Bill in building and engineering, we find art. Uh, and here are some of the benefits of, of being, playing with art or doing art, the act of it. It activa activates both sides of your brain, so you're constantly thinking and using both sides of your brain. 33% uh, of your students are visual learners, so being in a room like this could be very distracting. At the same time, having a provocation on the table would lead them right over to the table to start doing. Um, any child that uses senses, uh, all of their senses, art is ideal for this process. So if you have a water table filled with blocks and paper, um, this is a great place for children to start creating. If you add just little elements like um, uh, I think wood pieces, uh, like these, and you can just get these free from Home Depot. Uh, if you just add these into your block area, you're adding sort of an artistic twist. If you don't want to go to Home Depot, and you've got a lot of boxes from Amazon, you can just cut these up, any kind of texture, ripply, different. Um, no one's using this, but you can make it great bridges out of this, and then all of a sudden, art becomes engineering, building, physics. Um, and over here, uh, I put, well, and I'm going to give you time, a little time to plan, you can talk, but over here, uh, we had did a huge wire um, project last year in our studio, and this is nothing but a uh, cube that we drilled holes into, and then we put out a mess of wire and beads, and the children were able to uh, it's frustrating because they don't, all the holes don't always work. But if they don't work, then we take a hammer and nail and we make the holes bigger. You know, I mean, uh, you could add beads or not. This is one of our wire sculptures. So, you know, now we're into intrinsic design, um, physics, what goes together, how can you twist this, uh, using uh, a drill, hammer and nail, <coughs> and these wire cutters which the children love. They would just their cut wire. Uh, we use what we call, what I call a boinger, which is nothing more than a dowel or anything, a pencil, a pen. You don't need like really you know, a lot of sophisticated things, but they learn how to boing, and this is great for all the pre-writing skills and everything. Uh, but I'll give you time to play a little uh, more after that. Uh, Children need a place to express themselves at school where they can do big art. So think about instead of a, a easily using a big piece of plywood, moving furniture back and using the floor. Uh, art definitely stimulates eye hand coordination, perception. Um, it promotes self esteem, particularly when everybody is framed nicely and up for documentation, where there's photographs by a child's efforts. And the wonderful thing is, studies show that children who participate in artful expression read better and are better in math and science. So if there's ever a reason to do lots of art. Um, art teaches us to think more openly. Uh, it teaches us that there's definitely more than one solution to any problem. Uh, it cultures curiosity. Why do our hands have ridges? Why is your hand a different color? What can we use our hands for? Uh, we're just about to do a big project on shoes in our classroom, and which is great. I'm more excited about the feet part. Like I can see our children painting their feet. What do our feet look like? Why do we uh, wear shoes? What can my feet do and your feet can't do? Um, and in fact, I think all of us are going out to get a pedicure, so don't shame ourselves with our feet. Um, art also offers exposure to different possibilities, and it provides a common ground. Well, there, but it uh, provides like we can all do art. Art nourishes the human soul and one feels good doing it. 
and this is where I'm just gonna get on my soapbox for a second. Art is not traced hands with googly eyes. And I'm sorry, people have heard me say this before, I'm proud of this. All googly eyes should be eradicated <laughs> <laughs> because who's <laughs> Either, I seriously, either you've had a really bad accident and you can go to the hospital, <laughs> or they're stoned out of your mind. <laughs> no one's eyes roll around like that, right? So, uh, art is free. And it's fine to have a craft. I'm not knocking crafts. But crafts are formulaic and there's a direction. First, <laughs> then, voila. And most crafts, not all, Everybody looks alike. This is not art. Art is screwing around with a piece of plastic and putting it in front of your eye, or making a brush go, or everything, everybody's looks different. Art is everywhere and in everything, like life. Art is active, participatory, and living. These children, there's holes in the cups, and they're just swinging paint. You know, I mean, control, control. They're, they're two-year-olds, and they're just swinging paint, and it's going around and around, and it's actually gorgeous. It's a great auction piece, Jackson Pollock. <laughs> uh, this is a little girl who's sitting amongst um, just painted paper with watercolor, and she's actually, uh, I used to call it like, just the paper station, it's any kind of paper we paint, we just throw it in a heap on the floor. So if you need a piece of paper, you can go pick one that maybe one of your classmates made and use it into something else. So I just love the picture because she's sitting amidst um, all of this gorgeous paper and she's sorting it out. And I love um, this saying by George O'Keefe, because even the most quiet children say things in their art. Um, and that's how George O'Keefe felt. Uh, just indulge me. This is a little movie uh, that we put together. I, I'll give my co-teacher Susie Birdsell all the um, credit for actually taking all the little shots I did and putting them together. Let me see if I can get it to work. So
things like bottle caps uh, within months you'll have a whole thing of bottle caps or if you help if you need stuff and you ask parents parents will bring in lots of stuff so and you'll see more of the beautiful stuff or loose parts in the um, luncheon so any of the this stuff you can take or your paintings or your sticks um, when I was working around several people asked well what about the mess this is a huge obstacle for people in schools. I know that. Uh, first of all, you send out and re-emphasize and reiterate. Children need to come in comfortable, messy clothes, so we don't have to pay attention to the bows and the shoes and the tights. Um, you you embellish some elaborate story that talks about 
the best day your child ever had was when they come home covered with paint or mud or 10 band-aids on their arm. This means they were super active at school. And you literally just have to condition your parents. Um, and then, if you said all this and they still complain, you said I told you, so, <laughs> so I warned you. Uh, but Sue was just saying, uh, so Sue Purnell is the director at Willowood, and she was just saying in her summer camp, even the children's bathing suits are stunningly beautiful. <laughs> okay, so the first day the child wears a stunningly beautiful bathing suit, you put them in a smock. You know, and you try to remove as many of the embellishments as possible. <laughs> and then that day you tell your parents, like, yeah, we're going to be painting. Uh, most of the paint comes out if it's washable paint, with the exception of green. Green is still tough, even though it's washable. And I always just tell parents, put like a little shampoo and rub it, and it, and it will uh, come out. I use a lot of acrylic paint, which does not come out. And if you ever see me walking around, acrylic all over, inside sweater sleeves. But it's such a satisfying and beautiful paint. But parents get it, you know. So that's the clothing part. What do you do about the mess in your classroom? Um, and I'm going to actually look to Erin and Lisa. Um, can you control the mess? Yes. Um, first of all, let's talk about, uh, these can be really messy, okay? Because you know, you've got your sensory children. You know, the children that are sensory speaking, I should say, and they're like this. <laughs> you know, and they're flying all over. But what you do is you start small and you put out, and I'm not saying you have to put it out in glass either. You know, I just, they're the centerpieces, so I thought they should be fancy. But uh, <laughs> you would start small. So you put this out at one table with some mirrors or some belt pieces. And maybe four children at a time are working, right? Everybody has like little tables and centers. You start slow with one thing. They will learn how to pick up, take care of the materials. We use things like this all the time, particularly on our light tables, or um, we have uh, maybe six foot, five foot mirrors that I buy like at the hardware store for twelve dollars. We just put them on a table, and the children will um, build elaborate designs, particularly on the light table. And then at the end, they will put them all back in. Uh, like maybe these are all in different bowls. They will put them. They will sort and separate. They like to do that. But does it take a while? I mean, you put like 25 offers out, or even three, enough. So one, and then they will learn how to use it. Um, and, and like block area. So we might have these in our blocks. We might have our blocks. Big blocks, table blocks. Then we just enhance the block area. So we might have baskets. Well, we do have baskets. And they're just filled with paper. That's, does this paper get trashed after several weeks? Yes you know, consumables, but paper, we put out another little basket of popsicle sticks, um, and maybe another little basket of wood. When it's cleanup time, and, and believe me, we've had like enormous cargo ships that have been built in our block area where all this stuff becomes cargo. So now it's all on the back of the block ship. At cleanup time, the children will, with help of course, just like any kind of cleanup, Put all of these back, all of these back. Neat. It's how you manage your classroom. Okay, so that's it. Painting. Um, when, uh, so most of our classroom is sort of, you know, blocks. We, we don't need a lot of supervision, teacher supervision in blocks. Um, or it's easel, okay, and the easel is sort of by the snack table, so. You know, where it's just positioning your body, but it's giving children, so you don't have the whole class painting with paintbrushes. You put three out. You know, rollers, children love the house rollers that you paint your walls with. You put two out. It's okay if they wait. So that's one way of controlling the mess. 
Several people asked about the playground. There is no control on MS. Uh, in that, you have to, as a teacher, step back and say, okay, today we're painting, we're riding bikes through, or we're gonna just send all those wheels through. How are we gonna clean that up? Well, we filled up the baby pool with water and bubbles, and we just threw the wheels in there with big scrub brushes, which they equally loved, right? Is it art? Sure, it's bubbles and now paint color, you know, or is it anything? So that's one thing. Um, the cement, sidewalks, and grass, of course, gets paint on it. We have a hose, we do the best we can. And then we have an awesome director who's like, make more mess, right? Aaron doesn't care. Um, we know it will wash away eventually. And it's not like we leave the place trashed. Um, there is a method, but you just have to think about, this is what I want the children to do, or I think they're gonna do. These are the possible outcomes. What's gonna happen? Liz Leonard can tell you one time I was working in their classroom and we, were, we couldn't get the paint out, so I was with the kids and shaking the paint, and what happened, red paint? The top came off and the paint went spraying, remember? <laughs> And until we got the ceiling replaced, that red was getting the heat. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like someone was murdered, right? <laughs> um, I mean, it happened. The art is messy, but you know what else is messy? Life. Yeah. It's okay to be a little messy. Yeah, but you do have to warn the parents. Like, you do not have to buy your children's clothes at blah, blah, blah. You know, just, and they'll get the, they'll get the gist, right? It's, I find it's more, and I mean, absolutely no offense, but I find it's more a teacher control thing. Uh, you have to be open to, okay, this is gonna happen. But over time, like the first time you put on a big easel with those brushes, the first few days it will be really exciting. I'm not saying it's not always exciting, but something else better is gonna come along. Because that's just the way children are, right? So. Any more, oh, and somebody else asked me, where do I get all these materials? Well, one thing, I save everything. But two, a lot of like uh, those tiles, those blue tiles I was just holding, I go to Home Depot or Lowe's, and you buy them in a big sheet. And this is what like a designer would put in your bathroom, and then they, I forget what that's called. You know, they grout, grout, grout. grout yeah. They grout it back in. Um, so I just buy that, and then I pick them off. And I soak them in goo gone, goop gone, goo gone, goo gone, goo gone. So it's cheap, you know, and they're great. They're in the, um, when you have lunch, you'll see there's uh, other tiles. There's octagon and squares. So again, art, math, they can do octagon, and so you can buy any kind of um, tiles. You also paint on tiles, which are beautiful. Any other questions? No? Have I ever asked who's going to take that chance? Oh, what are you doing now? Well, a couple things. Well, we might make several, you know, because for the first day, um, we want to repeat and revisit because that's really fun. Um, no, I usually throw away because it's like that cheap butcher block paper and it's usually drenched. And by the time they've really played a lot on it and painted, you know, this pan gets tipped up and now we're pouring. It doesn't look like circular paper. Yeah, no, this is just paper. The canvas ones that can be really lovely. And this is all tempered paint because temper is pretty expensive as far as paint goes rather than acrylic. Um, what I have done is cut out squares and I'll send them home. Yeah. Or I'll put them in like some sort of book or a little poster for them. Um, to go home, but usually they don't really ask. We do take tons of pictures and we'll document it. So you could take even a photograph of this and document it. No, and in our school too, I mean, kids, children can take home um, whatever they want, but for the most part, um, it's really experiential art. It's not so much about making a product or, and I, again, my house is filled with my children's artwork and paintings. Um, I'm not against that, but I'd rather see more, particularly until they get to that realism stage, you know, where they're actually in formal school, being able to draw lines and perspective. 
I'd rather have them just go around. They have so much fun. And they literally run into the school, what are we going to do now? You know? And, and they keep us challenged. We're always trying to think. Uh, and, you know, we brought in sewing machines. They can sew on paper. They love that. Pound nail strip fabric. Anything big, gross mother. <coughs> but try itty bitty baby steps. Little itty bitty thing. Like, um, you know that little pool where you saw those children? That's a perfect place to start. Because it's all contained and you can instruct them. Like I didn't say, okay, throw those balls up. We really didn't say too much other than uh, try to make the balls do a dance, like a zhuzhing, you know, swishing, that's what I meant, swishing. And so that's a challenge for them and then they'll keep the balls and start with these. Okay? Thank you.